draft event, the giant slalom competition is truly a race against the clock. So these competitors will not be at all concerned about how they look, but instead their time at the finish line. And while they get ready, Steve takes us through the paces down the course. The GS is the only event in the World Technical Championships that is not judged, therefore time is everything. The first key to success, of course, is the start. You have to put your poles over the wand, and as you jump out of the gate, the last thing that should pass by the wand, which starts the timer at the bottom, is your ankles. We'll be looking for a difference between the pro skiers, former World Cup racers, and the people who have been making their living in judged events. On the race course itself, the snow is hard, even icy. Look for a good solid edge, no chatter, and a tight line on the gates. The final element in the World Technical Ski Championships is strategy. The whole bottom part of the course has a lot of rollers. You have to make sure that you have a good line so you don't slide after the bumps. Finally, it will turn out that the best technical skier should be the victor here today. And Krista Hartman from Team Solomon out of the gate now. Steve, Krista has a way of making her turns look so easy. Even on this race course, which is hard pack and requires good gripping of the skis, she will still be smooth. Now, she loads the ski really well and see how she maintains good pressure control throughout the turn. As you say, Lynn, a very beautiful skier, but it takes a tremendous amount of energy to keep the ski on edge on this really hard snow, and she's doing everything possible to get it down there. Moving from edge to edge, very aggressive, maintaining her line over that roller, a good run. And Krista is a former junior world slalom champion, so she's very much at home in the gates, and that shows as she crosses the finish line. And number 14, Heather Bray Metzger, also from Team Solomon, on course now. Heather is a member of the Canadian demonstration team. Heather also runs a ski school in eastern Canada, and she is a young mother. Now, I guess she's pretty busy, but I know that she has trained very hard for this event, and obviously, she is ready to do well here. Well, the training has included being very, very aggressive. She's going for it, but a bit too straight there, and she has to sacrifice some speed after the gate, carrying her speed across the flat, and once again, a bit of a jam. Nevertheless, she's really going for it. Well, she seems very focused and at least down here she seems to be unwilling to sacrifice speed for line and that is the only way to do well in a giant slalom course. So a pretty good run for Heather and another Canadian now in the gate from Team Solomon, Lisa Savajarvi. Now a lot of people don't know this but Lisa is a former Olympian and she achieved a top 10 Olympic giant slalom result during her career so this is exactly the kind of competition that Lisa will be attacking. Now she was a little bit low on that last gate but she is very strong and really hammering that in of the snow and you can see here a much higher line chopping into that gate and she's carrying a great deal of speed into the lower section of the course. Well she's really going after it down here. See how she stretches the legs out but keeps her hips and shoulders level with the snow. That is excellent giant slalom ski technique. A great run. And in the gate now getting ready to go from Team Rossignol marker Tamara McKinney of the United States, winner of 18 World Cup races, a three-time Olympian and the 1983 overall World Cup champion. We asked Tamara what she considered to be the highlights of her career. The World Cup overall in 1983 was a, uh, was a big thing for me. I was 20 years old and um, I, I, it had been a goal of mine that I wasn't just happy to win one race, I wanted to, to be consistent throughout the season and, and that was a big one. And then I had a slump, but I think coming back to win a bronze medal and a gold medal in the World Championships in 1989 was, was really a big, a big comeback for me and also for uh, the people that helped me do that. And Tamara is out to prove something here today. She knows that the World Technical Skiing Championships will crown the overall best technical skier in the world, but she also knows that this is her event against the clock, and she's going to go all out to try and be the fastest. And for such a slow talker, she's a darn fast skier. She's ripping downhill, but she doesn't look like she's trying so hard, and that's one of the scary things about Tamara McKinney. She can ski fast without looking like there's any effort at all. Well, you know, the thing that I think separates Tamara from many of the other great ski racers here is her ability to get off her edges quickly. She sets up nice and early for the next turn, and she crosses the finish line extremely fast. And a former U.S. teammate of Tamara McKinney's is at the top on course now, Pam Fletcher, representing Team Solomon and Steve. 
Pam's best result to date is a gold medal in 86 in a World Cup race in Vail. She also won the U.S. Nationals a number of times, so she could do well here. She's definitely going to be challenging Tamara for first place. She's a very aggressive style of skier, going right at the gates. Big step. Her upper body's bent over a little bit more than Tamara, and she's running straighter at the gates, but she makes it go. And Pam does tend to get a little bit wild. Her outside hand gets high. She passes the gate, so she gets twisted and caught inside on the inside ski just a bit, but maintaining her top, going for it, good speed across the finish. And no surprises, Tamara McKinney of the USA has won the GS. And after a look at the standings to date, we'll be back to beautiful Blackcomb Mountain. We are looking over beautiful Black Home Mountain, the site of the World Technical Skiing Championships. Marketing manager Rob McSkimming tells us why the resort is host to this event. You know, like everybody else, we were really curious to see, uh, you know, who would be the best all-around skier. And you, I mean, you go out and you look at all the competitions out there and they've got racing and extreme and all that kind of stuff. And we thought, well, who's the best? And we felt that if you ever had to do an event like that where you're crowning the all-around skier, what better place than Blackcomb where we've got, uh, you know, great fall line terrain, we've got great steep terrain. And we felt that it would be the perfect test, you know, the best in the world coming to, uh, you know, one of the best mountains in the world. Uh, we'll have the event here uh, through until 1996. And we're just looking forward to this event getting bigger and better. Remember, we're going to spend about $13 million adding an eight-passenger gondola called Excalibur that will rise out of uh, Whistler Village. And that will connect with a uh, four-person quad, high-speed quad chair. And uh, really will give us the most um, high-speed uh, lift capacity per skier visit of anywhere in the world. So we're really excited about that. It's going to take Black home to the next level just as uh, this event has. And in the gate now, Mark Garcia of Team Solomon. He is a strong contender for the overall in these World Technical Skiing Championships. And Steve Mark is leading right now, so he has to really go for it in order to hold on to that lead. And some people, including Mark Garcia himself, may be wondering if he can keep his edge here in the Giants' lawn. Maybe not as technically strong as some of the other skiers. We have to watch how his skis perform. Oh, a little bit of chatter here. And again, in this turn, he's just on the inside ski too much, and the ski outside ski is bouncing, but he's being very aggressive. That's the secret to Giant Slalom and if he can maintain that kind of pace he will not be far behind, Lynn. Well, as you said Steve, a little bit rough on the top. Some chattering there, but you see down here on the flats, very smooth, maintaining good speed across the finish line and I think for Mark that was a very aggressive run and he should be pleased with his time. And number 58, Ove Nygren of Norway, representing Team Solomon, a very successful competitor on the U.S. Pro Tour. Steve Ove also seems to be a very popular guy around here this week. He sure is. He's a really great guy. Has a lot of fun off the hill, but when he gets back on the course, he starts chopping down gates and cutting close to them. He's a very aggressive skier who makes it work, and he has such power under the outside ski. He really doesn't have that trouble with chattering that we saw earlier. A little bit of waving in the outside hand, but other than that, a good run. And he's so bad balanced as he moves inside the turn. He loads the ski nice and early and holds that pressure. So maintaining good arcing, although he was a little wild with the arms, just a powerhouse. Whoop. And he, whoa, powered his way through to the finish line. And number 39, Mateus Berthold of the United States, representing Team Rosignol Marker. Mateus was on the Austrian team for seven years, and during that time, he did very well. He had a number of top 10 results. And Steve, he is working really hard here. Well, Matias has a very distinctive style with the outside hand flying up and then dropping down at the gate and up and down at the gate. Yet he still makes it work. Sometimes waving the arms around might throw the edge off, but he keeps it carving around the turn and finishes off strongly. You know, the thing I really like is when he does finish the turn, he stretches the legs out, and then here he gets into his tuck right across the finish line. And I think that that was a very, very aggressive, fast run on this men's giant slalom course. And here comes American Felix McGrath, a top contender for this race. Felix was Rookie of the Year on the U.S. Pro Tour in 1992, and he was named the American all-round skier of the year in 1988 and 1989. And his slalom heritage is getting him a little bit in trouble. He's trying to get onto the inside ski a little early in the turn and it tends to get him off the outside ski before he's quite finished. Despite that, he's just going very fast. I mean, if he did it just right, he would go faster, but he's going like crazy anyway, Lynn. Well, you know, he's accelerating out of every gate, Steve, and his feet are pushing so far ahead of him that he almost doesn't catch up, but he manages extremely well to hang in there and he had a great run. 
Number 27, Norihisa Goto, representing Team Solomon on course now, a former nine-year member of the Japanese team. And Steve, it looks like Norihisa is off to a good start, a very respectable run here. Whoa, a little bit low out of that gate. He's taking a much straighter line towards the gate, which means he has to run it a bit lower than the others afterwards. And despite that, he has a good fast run. He's not as aggressive as the other skiers, much smoother and more fluid style. Something like Tamar McKinney, but it's working well. Well, he certainly looks quiet on the way down. Norihisa was second in the All Japan Ski Championships in 1989. He's a long way from home, but representing his country very well here today. And number 26, Canada's Jim Reed, representing Team Atomic. Jim Reed, younger brother of a former teammate of yours, Steve, a former crazy Canuck, Ken Reed. Now tell me, Steve, does Jim ski as well as Ken does? Well, I have to say, actually, Jim <laughs> skis better than Ken does. And GS and Salami's having a very strong run here, moving the outside ski back and forth. A little bit of a straight line and jamming it slightly after that turn. He has a much more upright style with his upper body, and that seems to be not as good in downhill, but he's certainly a strong GS skier here today. Well, a very strong technical skier. He spent nine years on the Canadian National Alpine Ski Team, and it's that tall stance that allows him to apply a lot of quick movement with the ankles. A good run. And representing Team Head, another Canadian in the gate now, and a local resident here in Whistler, British Columbia, Chris Kent, number 22. And Steve, Chris is the current 24 Hours of Aspen downhill champion, but you know, he also just likes to have fun and ski fast in any condition, but I think he really is a downhill specialist. Oh, there's no doubt about it. A former teammate of mine, Chris, is a very strong downhill skier. Doesn't have the same snap he needs at the end of the turn to beat the other GS guys, but he's definitely in there and back in his tuck, a downhill skier to the end. Well, Chris was a member of the Canadian National Alpine Ski Team for seven years, and that shows as he crosses the finish line. Now, let's take a look at the final results in the men's giant solemn race. Felix McGrath of the U.S. and Matthias Berthold of Austria tied for first, with Ove Nygren of Norway and Jim Reed of Canada in a tie for third place. And with five events completed, Marc Garcia of France has a narrow lead over Felix McGrath of the USA. That should set the tone for the mogul competition still to come.